Oh my goodness, guys. I oh do not like that. Huh? I want to see it. You can see, but you can see it. Oh, what if the garden. What, what about. So hopefully, hopefully, it doesn't hurt the garden. That's the concern. Is that hail? Yes, it's hail. It's hailing? Yes. Wait! Well, we just sit here and wait. Hopefully, it's not terribly bad. This is a pretty, pretty rough storm. Jeremiah just got home. Oh, there he is running. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> it's the most hopeless feeling when your work is outside and storms come because you just sit and wait. Uh, thankfully, oh, Jeremiah is so dumb. <laughs> Yeah, that's a soaker. Did you, what were you, did you, were you going and turning my sprinkler off? You were running a sprinkler. I, I wasn't meaning to run a sprinkler in a storm. I didn't know it was going to start. Listen, I'm not like you. I don't always track the weather. I didn't know it was going to start. This is intense. So, was everything fine when you went by? Yeah, the geese were, they're like facing into the storm and like <laughs> flapping their wings like this. They're like, yes. <laughs> I tried to take a picture of it, but there was too much rain. The baby geese? Yeah, the ones right there. That's funny. You can kind of see them. They're all gathered up by the waters, and they're facing into the wind. They're like, yeah. It's like they're surfing or something. So, I think this is only supposed to last about an hour. So, the kids are watching a movie. I'm going to cook some dinner, and then hopefully when it blows over, we can go out and assess the damage. Unfortunately, my pile of cardboard where we were expanding the garden, I saw it when this started, got blown over into the pond. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, this is like really coming down. Yeah, it's really coming down. What's up, bro? I want to help cook dinner. Okay, you can help me. Hold on. What did you say? Me and Papa T pulled up at the same time. Is he sitting in his truck? And his truck's still running. He's like, I can get down there. <laughs> about to call him and be like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> You're dripping in the house. He's sitting in the truck drop. <laughs> what do you think of that, Ryan? He <laughs> like Oh, you don't even want to look at it? I think got William is completely unbothered by the storm. Alright guys, it is evening, nearly dark, and I actually have already been outside. I came out a little earlier when it was still drizzling. I couldn't bring my camera to assess the damage. And it's really not too bad. Um, my squash plants look a little beat up. And now the storm has passed over and this lovely evening glow is coming out and I'm gonna take advantage of everything being wet being wet and go sow these wildflower seeds down around my tree it is pretty dreamy out here right now super cool nice I ran into the tractor supply the other day and uh, while I was in there they had these packages of seeds on clearance or I don't know that they were on clearance they were just marked down on sale and I grabbed two packages of wildflower seeds, but I've been waiting to sow them because it was so dry. Uh, but we just got a good few inches of rain with this storm, and I'm going to broadcast them all here. My dad did some dirt work while he was here, and we have all of this bare soil here around the tree and then over on the other side. And one of the reasons why I've never really done the like wildflower mixes is because the grass grows with such a vengeance here that planting wildflower seeds doesn't usually yield much because the grass is gonna grow up and overtake it but since in these places it's grass uh, the grass is not really growing from having been moved around um, the flowers might have a chance to get Establish. I really need to rake these in. I'm gonna throw them on top of the soil and then get a rake and rake them in. So this is a cutting wildflower mix. It has corn flour, um, some stuff I don't know, Cosmos, Lavatera, Zinnia, Chrysanthemum, Coreopsis, Delphinium, Baby's Breath, Rudbeckia. And then the other one is like Zinnia, Calendula, Cosmos, 
blue pine, wallflower, sunflower, and I'm just gonna put them all over here and then, um, oh, we're fogging up. And then I'll come back out here and, and write commands. Probably be too dark to see at that point. Hopefully they actually grow. I've not always had good success with this sort of thing, but I'm gonna try. All right, time lapse time for you guys. Sometimes I wish I could better capture the piece. Okay guys, it's actually been a few days since I shot the first half of this video. And since I shot the first half of this video, posted another video, I shot another video and posted it, talking about the soil, the issue that we're having, having received contaminated soil, and just kind of sharing my heart about it. That video was called my first ever rant video. I got a massive response from you, and I just want to say thank you. I could not have um, fathomed the amount of support that would exist here in this community, and I cannot have imagined how terribly brave that could have made me feel, so thank you. So today I wanna to just sort of catch you up about what we're doing and kind of tell you where we're going from here because having that massive response, uh, you know, partially we're just kind of going along with real life because we have kids and dairy cows and just a life that demands a lot of daily uh, monotony and that doesn't change whether you're dealing with soil issues. But we are shifting and uh, we really are gonna focus a lot on this. Out here, um, there's the kiddie pool garden we did a couple weeks ago. Right in here, we have this big vat of compost tea that's aerating. So you guys know Will is our employee. He works here, he's on vacation last week when I was posting those videos. Um, he's back now and Will, one of the reasons why um, we hired him. One, we really loved him, and two, he has a great passion for soil health. And I really felt when we were first talked to him about hiring him and knowing that our future, that we really wanted to build this learning center and um, create a place of resource, I knew that it had to come from a place of the soil. Like, the soil is the most important part of a farm it really is everything goes back to the health of your soil so we just started this yesterday and it was up to here so this morning was the first application of this compost tea and i'm getting kind of some before and after information set up and also just kind of getting our process together so i can tell you guys how to do it so that's coming Hey guys, good morning, little cutie children. I've got my, well, they're technically my cousins. I say my niece and nephew, Audrey and Ryan here. Hello, sweet. Hey, Ryan. Hello. Hey, AJ. And then the boys hanging out. All right, let's go down here. So here are a few different compost piles. We have our compost that we started um that's the elaine ingham method these are just more static piles um a couple of these are for where we tore down that barn and just scraped to the ground and took everything out of it that's like years of stuff here we have kind of just been trying different methods and i think what we're going to end up doing is building sort of an area that we can compost on a large scale and turn with the tractor because one of the things that we're really hoping to do in doing larger scale composting is being able to do large amounts of compost teas and spray over large areas like pasture specifically. So the thing we're figuring out now is compost teas as you see it there which is on a scale of like four this much space but i want to be able to show you guys how to scale that to a smaller garden as well as to spraying fields good morning garden so i stopped at a roadside stand the other day and they had flats of vegetable starts marked down super cheap so i think i paid like 12 dollars for a whole flat of plants um, which means that I've got some backups. Part of 
the frustration of having this contaminated soil damage everything in my high tunnel was that those were the majority of the tomato, pepper, and eggplant seeds that I had started this year. So it was just a lot of work had gone into that. Um, and I was really bummed because I was like, well, you know, there goes that harvest and I really didn't have enough time to start things from seed again. So I am taking some suckers off of the healthier tomato plants I have outside and I'm gonna root them. But being able to find a bunch of starts was really awesome. So we're gonna start working on these raised beds this week and get those in. So that's nice. I have a long enough season that I'll still be able to harvest a good deal off of that and hopefully get some canning done. Bears running around and getting the killdeer birds all riled up. So the outside garden is doing amazing. Look how beautiful this all is. I noticed, look at this, little baby tromboncino squash. So lovely. Here, these Armenian, or Armenian uh, long, well, cucumbers. They're, they're melons, but we use them like cucumbers. And I know I saw a couple of these little guys. Oh, a tiny bee is taking a nap. Hi, tiny bee. Oh, he took off. Um, ah, there we go. Check that out. There's a little, little one of those. That one will be harvested in a few days. These grow so fast. And here are my favorite cucumbers, the silver slicers, and I got some little ones here. Of course, you can harvest these at any time. I mean, you could harvest them really small like this and make little gherkin pickles or let them get larger. I'm gonna let them get larger. I've got a good little shady spot to pop in right here. And I wanna talk to you guys kind of about our loose plan right now in moving forward. As I said, I could not have even fathomed the response that that last video would get. Thank you for everyone that has taken the time to encourage to share your own experience with herbicide damage and purchased compost and how it's cost you your garden. Um, thank you for sharing your experience and what you've been doing about that. And then also um, just for sharing that and I, again, just mind boggling response, thank you. Of course, whenever you're dealing with anything, um, if you try everything at once and you don't really know what worked. And so we're trying to be very mindful in what we do to solve this issue. Um, and also not just that we're trying to find a solution, but we're trying to find a solution that is accessible to people that we can share what to do. Um, of course, I'm not the first person by any means that is trying to find a solution to herbicide damage. I know that uh, David the Good um, shared and commented. I know that he has been tackling this on his channel for quite some time now. He's got a lot of information out there about remediating soil that's been contaminated as well as building soil that's poor. Uh, definitely an amazing resource there. I know that just all over people have been addressing this issue. I know that this has been a pretty prevalent issue for the last 10 years and that it has become more and more common over the last, uh, you know, handful of years, last few, to have soil be contaminated and, and kill the garden. Obviously, not all issues in the garden are caused by soil contamination. Um, there are still the normal things. Uh, there's still overwatering and underwatering and pest pressure and imbalance in the soil as far as too much nitrogen, not enough, different things like that. Um, so we can't just automatically assume that if our garden's struggling that it is soil contamination. But whenever you know that it's not all of those other things, you can start to think, okay, maybe that's what's going on. So what we're going to do moving forward, I actually got, started getting all these comments, started getting all these messages, and a few people had suggested Trad Cotter's book, um, Organic Mushroom Farming and Microremediation. And I ordered the book, um, and later that day, Will and I were talking. I feel so tickled that here we have this person working for us that's so passionate about soil, and he was like, you know, Trad Cotter is local. He lives in South Carolina. That's who Will got his certification. Will certified in mushroom foraging and he's able to like sell mushrooms that are foraged to like restaurants and stuff like that because he went through Trad's program and got certified. And it's so funny because, you know, Will's always like bringing mushrooms to me that he foraged that I cook and use. But 
we were talking and he actually reached out to Trad Cotter. And so we are going on a little field trip tomorrow um, to go up near Greenville and visit Trad's place. And they are gonna help us develop something of an experiment to see how we can use micro remediation to help clean and purge the soil. So I've discussed over the process of this that the things in here that are not nightshades um, or legumes, we didn't have any legumes in here, but the legumes that were in the soil out in the main garden died immediately. Um, they're doing fine and some of the peppers are doing okay. The peppers on this side, I don't think this was quite as bad. And so they're actually producing something. The ones on this side, I'm not super hopeful that they're going to because they're pretty badly stunted. And then of course the tomatoes are very stunted. We're gonna go get Trad's opinion. And what we may do is take it all out, try to remediate it all at once, and then maybe plant something again specifically. Probably beans are gonna be our test crop because uh, this particular herbicide damage heavily affects nightshades, tomatoes worse than the others, and then legumes. And since tomatoes just take longer, um, you know, to start and get to the point that you're going to see the damage, legumes are the best crop to grow to test. So uh, right now we're not doing anything. We're not taking anything out until we get that opinion to see what we should do moving forward. And Trad's gonna help us kind of come up with what we're, what experiment would best show people how they can scale this solution to their garden. And so we're, we're kind of putting a hold on like doing anything other than maybe spraying some of those compost teas. And I was given lots of other suggestions of people telling me things to do. Some were simple, some were in depth. All I think were very good ideas. Uh, however, we're going to kind of focus on these solutions for the time being. And I had some people ask, well, so why aren't you scraping it out? Why aren't you doing that? And if that wasn't clear, while this is a loss to me, it's not my whole garden. While I could scrape this out and just buy soil from a place and test it, make sure it's okay, and then put it in, uh, that wouldn't help the people who spent their last $500 getting their garden in and got bad soil. I, I, I can do that, but my hope is, is that if I have the resource to go to Trad Cotter's farm and get this information, I have the resources to set up these composting teas and find a scalable way for other people to do it. So instead of being like, okay, here's an opportunity for me to grow food, Food, I'm seeing this issue as an opportunity to teach people how to remediate soil that's been damaged by herbicides and um, and so that's what this is this is this is the greenhouse that is going to be the classroom for teaching people how to do that of course there's the um, you know planting sunflowers can remediate soil planting grass crops planting corn can remediate soil hemp is something that a lot of people said and we might get to those we might do lots of tests in here but the, the place we're starting today is compost tea, um, which is, of course is using worm ca castings. My friend Natalie has an amazing course about do using worms um, and making worm teas and how to take care of worms and worm farming. I'll put a link to that down below. Um, I had Natalie on the channel a couple weeks ago. I was with her in Tennessee and uh, I know she's been working on doing worms for years now and she's getting to the point now I've made this great course. So that's like a good resource to start with. Will already has a worm set up. We're gonna be setting up worms here. Um, I had a worm farm in Arkansas and just didn't move it. Um, I put the worms out in the garden before I left. But I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and set something up, both a small scale that you guys can emulate and a larger scale for what we need because Will and I were talking this morning about scaling that compost tea up to be able to spray the pasture. So it's kind of a lot. Um, this has been a really intense few days of, of kind of realizing that we have an opportunity to teach something necessary and we're going to take that. And, and though this felt like a blow and it felt like a loss, ultimately I'm choosing to see this as a fantastic opportunity to give people the information and the resources that they need to make those raindrop decisions, to put another drop in the swimming pool, to fill that up, to make the change in the earth. Um, I feel so inspired. I feel so inspired and hopeful 
and I have held on to this certainty for so long that things were going to change, that we were going to see um, these giants of dysfunction in our agriculture and in the way that our earth is being treated and the way that we're handling food um, fall that in, in my lifetime that that was possible even when it didn't feel possible I have held on to the fact that that is possible and um, the response to that video that rant video it, it was kind of one of those moments of being like I've thought this this whole time but there there's always been that that voice of you're crazy like it's impossible it's not gonna work and I, I think that I think that your response quieted that voice for me like it is gonna work it really is here's where um, we'd actually dug out a trench here put that contaminated soil in the trench planted beans in it they all came up and then they all uh, swiftly died so the fact that beans so quickly show the damage from these herbicides is an incredible blessing because beans germinate in a few days and whereas a tomato plant to really get a tomato plant going takes quite a lot longer and then as evidenced by my high tunnel you plant them and they don't show damage at first it takes a couple weeks for them to really start showing it these beans germinated in this contaminated soil and were struggling just very evidently within the first week of germinating and then they died um, which is great it's kind of like a canary in the mine situation so I'm going to start suggesting to everybody before you put any soil at large in garden beds on your garden that you germinate some beans in it just go get a cheap bag of beans from the grocery store doesn't matter what kind just dry beans as long as they're whole you don't want to get like split peas or something like that but but get like a whole bag of pinto beans put a few of them you know handful five or so in any new soil that you get and let those germinate uh, give them a few days and make sure that they're growing without showing any stunting curling uh, shriveling up anything like that and that's your canary in the mind that's saying okay this is safe this soil does not have contaminant in it and if you're in a place that you're concerned that you're having issues in your garden and you think maybe it is herbicide damage go ahead and throw some beans in if you haven't already planted some if you've already got beans growing and they're shriveling up and dying that might be a telltale way to look but if you're seeing curling and stuff like that put a few beans in the soil let them grow and that can be a telltale because if they grow just fine you might be like okay well this isn't what I thought it was and you can explore other options and you can buy a bag of beans for a couple of dollars and just keep those on hand for testing your soil that is going to be kind of a baseline thing for me at this point we're going to be uh, testing whatever soils we get with that Katie Katie got a haircut didn't she look cute well Audrey you ready to get on an airplane today and fly home yeah. yeah. It's been a good couple of weeks. What was your best part of your visit? Being here. Just being here? Yeah, it was really fun to have you guys here. So this video is just a little bit scattered, but I wanted to uh, kind of touch base with you before we move forward and content that will be partially the beautiful monotony of living on a farm and doing the same choice day in and day out and the excitement of garden season, but also um, our process at taking small steps to confront this giant problem that I have full confidence that we can do together. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today and always. I bless you. Until next time.